probably teenager that time. And as a teenager, is uh, I think all the people we say is a puppy love. You know what? You put your mentality when you were a teenager, it's not puppy love for me. I really love him so much. I love him so much. Yeah. Until now, yes. Also. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, I think along the way, until we came to Singapore to study, my parents uh, doesn't like, didn't like him. Didn't. Okay? My parents didn't approve our relationship. With the reason of um, he is not stable enough, he has uh, no income yet, I cannot see a bright future that you if you are married with him. And so, blah, 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 blah. so this is when we are we senior in, uh, high school. Yeah. So uh, in, in, we were in a courtship when we are uh, when we are here. So until we study here together, you know my parents still also still the same thing. Although I try to. You know, sometimes I really argue with my parents, you know, that kind of moment that, uh, that I, you cannot understand me. But then there is, um, there is a time that I'm sitting down when I was doing my homework. Then suddenly I feel like, I feel this unpeacefulness. Like, I love this man so much. That we feel that we love each other so much, but there's an unpeacefulness inside my heart. Because really, my parents, Give me a lot of input and so on. So after, after I think about it, then I tell myself, hey, it is not right. It is not right to to have this kind of feeling of unpeacefulness, and I still just go on with the relationship. So here comes that moment that I really invite him, invite William to have a very personal talk. And that's the time then we choose that we broke up. So we, sad. yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> the whole email story. Is so <laughs> because he went to emails, I haven't went to emails yet. So we, we we broke up for two years. So we broke up for two years. That's after six years of. Yeah, yeah roughly. That's after six years of courtship. So we broke up for two years. So during that broke up moment, you know, the. Uh, I feel uh, very, very easy. <laughs> yeah, I feel like ah, all gone. Uh, uh, I, I, I very feel very peaceful. Feel very peaceful. And after, uh, when it's about two years, ah, they come this. When you're about the age that you think like, hey, oh, my friend has boyfriend really. Then you feel that like, hey, I. I really have the urge to have a partner and keep and then the thinking is going to like oh who will be my husband in the future. So um, it's so difficult for me, but then I remember, I remember God. This is the moment that I remember God. I remember God that hey, I should pray to God. I should be more closer to God, then I think I will find the answer. So I spend a lot of time praying in the Novena Church almost every day except weekend. So every day I will spend two hours, I every day go to Novena Church from Queenstown until Novena. I will pray a rosary two hours there, I cry there, I ask them. My prayer is that please, uh, please send me a partner in life that will bring me closer to God. Because sometimes I cannot trust, I cannot trust whether this guy is good or not. Whether this guy really, I can stay with him forever in my life or not. So I ask that from God every day. So after, after a few months of praying, suddenly, come up in my, uh, someone messaged me on the phone. It's written there, William. <laughs> so we didn't contact each other for that two years. So William was like texting me, Oh, how are you? I said like, oh, I'm is fine. It, is it the Facebook? I don't know, but it's texting. <laughs> <laughs> it's texting. It's texting. It was like... Because when you got broke out, I erase everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah lah, when you, when you are the one who broke other people, it's easier for me to move on, okay? The one is broken. <laughs> <laughs> But you survive, you survive, okay? This is how I got us. So he was inviting me to a healing rally. He was inviting 
Yeah. So I was, I was so surprised. Like, wow. Like someone suddenly invited me again, then I knock on video with the same person. I said, okay, I'll give it a try, go for healing rally. So we went for a healing rally. For the healing rally, uh, then it did us to Emmaus. It did me to Emmaus. That's the first time I went to Emmaus. Then after a certain time, a certain journey, and I have the assurance from my prayer, and it gave me the peace that, hey, this is someone that can bring you closer to God. And this is the time that I see that hey, so there is someone who is run together with me towards God. And we are keeping each other like, who will arrive first to God? Who will enter heaven first? So then we have a good talk. So we have a good talk here and we decided to be in a relationship with him. And that's the first time I went to Emmaus and like, oh, so this is the person, huh? <laughs> I went to bed, oh, so this is the girl, huh? I was like, ah, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> so I was, so, uh, after, and my parents still doesn't, didn't like him. Oh, this is a challenge. No? This is a challenge. So we go into a good relationship. But on that time, I have this kind of peacefulness. It's like everything comes with the nature. Everything comes so naturally that you will feel it. You will you have the assurance that he is the one. And how then we can win over our parents' heart, my parents' heart and down. I was thinking to myself, if you are running towards God with this person, you just show your parents as well that you are changing. You are changing, become a better person, not a person that always comes from them. So there is a time I, I try to put an effort and I message my parents. I said, uh, thank you for raising me up that um, I have such a good morality in my life. And I have met this guy who is running together with me to God. And I think that's the moment that struck my mother. It was like, oh, how come you can change? Because I'm a very expressive person. When I feel unhappy, I will be very angry. But that time is that my mother keeps telling me, I will keep telling me, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And she asked me, how can you change so much? I was telling her, it's because God changed me. And I have a partner that run towards God together. So, I end up, uh, my parents can see, I think it's not our love, but it's God's love. And that's how they ended up. And, and I think, thank you. <laughs> and I think, uh, so so we got together for a while before we broke up for two years. And after we come together, uh, we totally changed our typical habit or activities. Um, instead of just having fun as girlfriend or boyfriend, we actually spend most of our time when we meet each other to play rosary. And somehow, I mean, God do wonder, and the parents from not agreeing become agreeing, and and they are one of the best in laws that I come up. Okay, they are the only in laws. That <laughs> 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 I really feel you see, I am one of their. That's why I love him so much. <laughs> I am one of their son, their own son. So. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, it's, it's really, uh, uh, it, it was very painful when Natalia decided to break up because we were, for, for uh, we, we are in a relationship for close to, um, almost I feel forever, right? I, do, I don't know any other girlfriend. Um, and at that time I was very thinking, like, okay, we just get together and get married later on. Then she suddenly called and broke up. It is very painful. You feel like you are deleting everything about Natalia from from my life. I deleted all the gifts. Can't even block me. Yeah. But but looking at it now, or looking at it after six months or one year after the breakup, I feel very grateful. I think that is one of the best moments that I have. Um, to be single again, right? <laughs> and, and, and to have that clarity that, uh, yeah, and, and when I invite her, actually, um, I'm very happy with my life, and um, 
I, I, is, I'm really inviting her um, for the intention of evangelization at that time. Yes. <laughs> That's really the intention at that point. I don't even thinking of finding a girlfriend because I'm so happy with my my life. Um, and and yeah, so so it's, God just do water and when, when you really look for him and you look around, of course remember to look around, right? He, he gives you someone that um, will stay with you um, until you're old and, and help you to be closer to I think what we want to share from our experience is that we are not urging you to broke up with your partner, huh? please. <laughs> it's not the moral of the story. Thank you for making that clear. It's not, please. But uh, what we want to address is about the discernment. The discernment is very important. It, it is very important. Uh, you know, sometimes people just want to be denial. It can be like, I can be just say, oh, I've been with this man you know, for six, seven years already. Then I just feel unpeaceful. I feel not joyful. Then I just break up. I don't want to know. I, you know, it means I don't feel good. I don't want to know. It's okay. We just carry on with the relationship. I mean, if that feeling come to you, you need to sit down and quieten down your heart. You really need to sit down and pray. And you need to discern about it carefully. The discernment can be, the result of the discernment can be a positive one, be a good one. It can be, but it also can be a negative one. What we want to address is when the discernment comes up is a negative result. I mean it's it's not a good result, it means I choose to broken up. I, I choose to break up. Then you must have the courage. Don't hang the other one. You have the courage to have a serious talk about it. Talk about it. Honestly speak about it. And if the of course if the un, the discernment is positive, it should be happy lah, okay? It, it, and you should be married as soon as possible. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I now uh, we want to continue. How can we decide that we we go into marriage after after, after our parents is so good, after our parents agree with our relationship, everything we still go on. How then we decide? Okay, this is the time that we need to enter the marriage. This is the time. Uh, because our expectation to each other uh, has been changed to become a higher standard. Like, I want you to tell me everything about your life. Why Why you never share with me what happened in your office? I will ask him about that. Uh, then she will just answer that, uh, oh, mm, I don't think it's important to share. So after that, we have this kind of issue. Then we talk again. We have a good talk. He told, I tell him that I feel I have this issue with you. He feel I have this issue with me. Then we talk about it. Ah, then we have conclusion that our 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 expectation to each other is going deeper, and that is when we decided to go into a marriage. I think this is the time. This is the time uh, because uh, when you enter into marriage, um, your expectation towards each other is different. That is where the wedding vow takes place. And I think last time we had the urge. We also had had the urge of like, oh, maybe let's just stay together. You know, it's so difficult. I Prince Town, you stay at Jurong there. It's so difficult for me to travel here. I send you here, I send you there, and then I go out after that. Then we were like, okay, no. If you want to stay together, let's go for a church wedding. So that is that is the the, the discernment that we did and how we enter into it. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, so there's a three, three point that we have don't grab, don't use, don't hang. Um, do, do we have time left for answering questions? Maybe we have five to ten minutes. Five to ten minutes? Okay, so, so um, next we have several questions um, listed. Uh, we will start with the one with the most light because probably that's the the uh, unless you have yeah, if you have any any questions that you feel relevant and you want to push up further you can like the questions by the way. So the first one is can give some examples. No, what, Peter, what we should what we should do during courtship in order to test or assess or know that he or she is the one. 
Uh, this is a very difficult question. Can you give some example what we should do during courtship in order to know that he or she is the one? I think just now. Yeah. So so we I don't think we have a standard or a, 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 a guidance from the Catholic Church on this, but. Uh, from our experience, praying together, and at that time we choose the rosary, really helps. It tests our commitment. It tests our desire to be together, and it helps us to really see each other going closer to God. So, so for us, it is the rosary praying together that helps, and we are serving together as well. So, so that is how we we kind of get more and more um, sure or certain that, that we are for each other and we want to get married together. There is the statement that hope is running with you towards God. Hope is running with you towards God. Okay. Can I just share something? Else? Yeah, sure. I guess for this, like what you said, there is no standard for everything. So all you have to do is just like, you just try it. If not working, then move on. So you don't, there's no ex, you don't have to be really follow somebody examples. Then only this happened, then you try like okay, this thing somebody invent already. Then you okay, this event is is there already, but it's belong to others. I guess everyone here is we are created to be creative and just go out and do something new and create your own stories. You don't have to live like follow somebody example. You can just see somebody example, but you don't have to necessarily just follow it because. There's no really, if you like somebody, you just have to tell that person, I guess, that's all. That's as simple as it is. But if, whether it works or not, how it works, really, like, like what you say is you have to all, all, all together, the journey has to be putting God first. And I guess the rest of the thing is just like, you will come along. The God will show the blessings all the way. So, so I guess, just put God first up. I think this is a this is a good one. Yeah. I think uh, there is a good one. I think in in a in a relationship, whether it is with our partner or with a human being, with the nature, with the animals, or everything, I think there is no uh, certain example that we should follow. But very sure that there is one thing that we must follow. There is one thing that is uh, correct, which is I think it's a good one. I think God must be the center of it. God must be the center of everything. And we are following God. We are following God's mandate. We are following the scripture's mandate. So frankly speaking, I don't really spend <coughs> so when I my discernment is very natural. Um, Natalia spent a lot of time praying. Um, and she kind of I think for ladies is typically you have more concern in choosing the thing. Uh, choosing the the one right, but for for me, uh, for me it's very natural. In fact, I don't really yeah. Beside the rosary, it's very natural for me. And when when uh, the times come, my heart is just peaceful to choose her as the one. So so yeah, if you. Looks toward God. If you put God first, He can do wonders, and He wants the best for all. So I think that's very important. I think we go to the very important questions. I think this is what everybody wants to know: How far is too far in a relationship? I think maybe we can address these questions. I try to conclude the questions, okay, after reading everything, I think, I try to conclude. I think, after all, with all of the questions, blah, 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 I think, come to one thing. When you are in a relationship, how far is too far? So I asked the same question last time, um, when we were in courtship, I asked, I think, one of the retreat, how far is too far? And the, the father actually responded very uniquely. Um, say at the time was Father David Garcia, the, the short priest, and very cheap when he answered. Um, I don't think I can beat him, but what he's saying is that when you're in a courtship, what you should ask is how can you help this person closer to God? How can I love this person 
how can I protect her or his dignity, his soul, her soul, right? Because a real love want the best for the other person. It's not wanting to go the furthest possible for enjoyment. You know? So, so, so is is again. I don't think there is a real guidance on this, but of course, uh, the the measurement stick that we should put is how actually we live this. Uh, we love this person. So it's similar to the second point, which is don't don't use, right? Instead of using them, instead of finding what is the maximum limit I can go to, you find how to love them to the maximum, how to make them a better person, how to protect their dignity as a woman, as a man, right? And uh, how to help them to be closer to God. So, yeah, so that's, that's essentially I think for the how far is too far as an, another one. Um, like, I think what most people want to know is what kind of action I can do. What kind of action I can do with my with my partner. So I think uh, if holding hands when we're in a relationship, if just holding hands like this will create arousal. Then I think it's a no. So there is no guideline. So you must see yourself and your partner. If hugging when you are in a relationship will create arousal, I think it's a no. I can tell you this is a no. We should have a no and a yes answer. I think for God this is a no when it's create arousal. If kissing will create arousal, then you must tell yourself, no, no. If staying together will have a temptation for you that, to do the action that will create arousal, I think there is a no, no. So I think for, for, uh, for Catholics, it's very difficult for us to say no or yes. But in the scriptures, there is no or yes, and this is a no. When it creates arousal, when you are not in a marriage, it's a no, no. So if you cannot hold it to do it, please and find a priest, sign up for a church, marriage decent about it, of a, approach a priest, and please go for a, a marriage. I think maybe there is a time for you to decent whether you need to go for a marriage. Okay. Okay. I think one more. One last question is: uh, Is this a real question? Why do we need to get married? Are you asking that? Are you asking that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the question. Why do we need to get married? Uh, so. Why do we need to get married? Why not? <laughs> I think. Um, uh, why we need to get married? Um, you may or you may not. So there is come the part of discernment again. So discernment, this word discernment is very important. It is very important. I think the question is when you are in a relationship, mm. it's more fact, more fact. Why do you need to end it as a marriage? In marriage, and the question is not so much talking about whether should I get married or should I be a uh, relationship? Yeah, I think, yes, thank you for offering yeah. that. That's my question. So, so, oh, okay. Okay. so I think that is relevant to question uh, the, the point number three, right? Um, the intent of discernment, I mean the intent of courtship is actually a discernment period. Right? So so you don't do courtship for the sake of courtship. Right? Uh, it's a means to an end. Right? right? It's not it's not the end in itself. And and God instruct all of us to, you know, um, I, I forgot the exact word, but to uh, get married and multiply, right? And uh, yeah, so so it is just one of the vocation that we can choose, we can help, which we can have, uh, which is 
the common occasion uh, in this world, right? Beside the consecrated life. So, yeah, I think it's about time. That's why. <laughs> but yeah. So, so it is. It is a must to get married if you are discerning that okay, and you realize that or oh, um, being together with someone else is your vocation. There is no vocation that is uh, only girlfriend and boyfriend forever. You have a vocation of consecrated life, either as a priest or as a lay, um, consecrated lay, right? Uh, but there is no vocation as a, a girlfriend and boyfriend. It's not in the nature. Because when you, uh, I mean, when God gives us instruction, it's actually for the good of us, and I believe it is in our human nature. So when we have a, when we think that consecrated life is not our choice of life, is not the one for us. The other flip of the coin is married life, right? And it's not girlfriend and boyfriend life. It's not. It's not a valid vocation. Um, I think uh, it's from the scripture itself in the event uh, when Jesus Jesus made, uh, made his first uh, miracle is when in the wedding of Cana when Mother Mary uh, asked Jesus to change the water into wine in, in a wedding in Cana I think that is the moment when the wedding has become very sacred in Catholic teaching Wedding has become a sacrament. So if you are in, if you are in a courtship, as one again, a, 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 a courtship again is is a time for you to discern whether you should go to marriage or not. And if you really have discerned that oh, uh, this is the one that I think if you have discerned this is the one, he or she is the one. Marriage is the ending. We should have the ending story. Marriage is the ending story. Okay. Anymore. Okay, right. The question is why do I do I need to get married? If you are in a relationship. If I'm in a relationship, why do I need to get married? I guess for me the answer would be like commitment. Because during the marriage there is a vow you have to make, it's a promises. I guess it's between the girlfriend and the boyfriend, it's just like you know, if you don't like this person you can pray out many times. And there's no commitment in between. But when you are married, there is a sacrament that, you know, there is a commitment you make, the promises in between. So I guess the difference from it is just like, you make a promise and this is what the promise you give to this person and this is the person who has changed the promises. And, in, and also at the same time, you will receive the blessing from the, from the uh, both parents, uh, I guess, and also from the Lord and also from the church. And it's just like officially you are being like, you are in this relationship and you are serious to each other, it shows that so that you are no longer like, you know, it's a play game, so like, you know, it's a game, but you are up to another, the next thing in life. So there is something, for me, it's a commitment you make for each other, which is, it's a very sacrament and it's a very sacred thing. So it's just like, you don't, don't simply just like tear it off. But nowadays, I know the reality is just like, let's just try it in a relationship, but I feel, you know, we are here already, let's just try go for marriage. But what today the sharing, I guess, is very moving is that really discern, because, you know, when you really discern and whether this thing, because the first time I heard, like, you have deserved for 40 years, I was just like, what you are doing for 40 years, you just deserve, but I guess this is how serious they are to really, you know, to find the one. Because yesterday I just had a talk with a friend, and my friend just talked about something, it's the one to me, and just like, if you got the one, then you will know the person that, you know, you will really give everything and you will just like no matter good days or bad days you will be there for the person. I'm just like I never met that person yet, so yeah. So I'm okay with my life for the moment. So I'm just like alright. And all of a sudden I'm just like and with the today sharing it's just like it's more about the discerning of this like maybe I should look into it, maybe or may not be but I'm just like everyone I guess is like most of the people is looking for decent for the marriage I guess. <laughs> so I guess my point is, I guess, to answer back the question is the commitments you make for the, and the promises, I guess. There are some things that we don't take it lightly. Uh. 
I guess our word can create something, at the same time it can destroy something. So if you met the promises that I love you, then I guess the, there will be more blessing coming. Just that's all. So there's a valid point. Uh, but just to emphasize, I think courtship itself is not a game. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's something uh, period that yeah. you should take it seriously. Um, French, yeah. So, so I think it's a very valid comment. It's a commitment, and when you commit, more grace will come. One of them is children, um, and uh, yeah, there is a lot of blessings. And I think you need to open up your heart, not only to listen for marriage life. You can open up your heart and your mind to listen for a uh, consecrated. Uh, consecrated life. You, you must listen on your vocation. So I don't think everybody listen for marriage vocation. You, you just need to open your heart to listen for another vocation. So the, the rest of the question we will respond uh, to text because we, I think we are running out of time. Um, you, you can still see in the slide we will try to address probably by tomorrow. And if you have question regarding marriage, because next week, not uh, next, week. Uh, no, uh, next. the next teaching session will be about marriage. On the sixth so, of July. So, yeah, why do we get to get to to get married? Probably we will also yeah. address in that teaching so, session. So I think for the questions, why is it marriage? Come on sixth of July. I think I think I just want to clarify a bit. Why the reason why I come up with the questions is because. Nowadays we encounter a lot of things, uh, especially from the uh, secular world, right? I think if you are talking about commitment, I think in the Asian culture we are still have that kind of mindset that okay, we need to commit to something. Whereas in the uh, Anglo culture, in the Western culture, it is so common not to get married. Like they, uh, we encounter one of Irma's friends that they say, you need to get married because if you are not married, you cannot buy a house in Singapore. Right. For them who stay in Holland, in Netherlands, they don't need to get married to buy a house. So they don't have any reason to get married in the first place. They are committed in their relationship with, without the status of marriage. And I think it comes from the secular world that, you know, uh, crippling, start to crippling already about commitment. And in fact, a lot of young people nowadays are very afraid of commitment. Right? Uh, I think we have, we have a common friend also that, who, who is afraid to get, to get pregnant. Right, because of the scary story that uh, people always emphasize during having a child, what if you, you lose your child when stillborn, right, and so on and so forth, right? and it becomes very scary, it's a commitment. And so that's why uh, I think uh, it will be good also that, uh, to, know, to understand that actually marriage is a vocation and it's a calling from God, and when God calls us, I think it refers to the previous teaching series that He, he has that promise that this calling will bring us joy, right? Because it, today, especially in today's reading, uh, St. Paul says we are not no longer live for ourselves because Christ has died for us, that we ought to live for someone else. And that living for someone else, that uniting the suffering of us with Christ will bring us joy. I think, I think that's the reason why I bring up with the question. And I think I just want to clarify about uh, how far is too far. I think uh, William and Natalia has said about about it very very detailed and very well but I think if I think one of the, the things that Natalia is that if you still feel so easily to get aroused then maybe it's time to get married. I think for me I I don't really agree with it. I think if you are so easily to get married I think you have some problem with your subject you need to address. Yeah. Maybe it's still the last full mindset, the, the, the eros mindset that you still have. Maybe you, you are not aware of that uh, addiction about that that you need to address first. Maybe it comes from you know maybe somebody abused you in the past or whatever it is. So I think I think it's what William that is William said that it's so subtle, right? We don't really realize about it. And it's just because inner work. And I experienced this myself, right? Uh, I come in I come into a relationship with the neurons in my, my heart. I don't feel uh, knowledge in my family, that's why Whenever uh, certain things not go into my way, then I will get mad. So yeah, ma. So I'm okay. <laughs> so I think I think it is important to get into a relationship, uh, knowing who you are, where you are come from, uh, what are your uh, 
your intention. Weakness, weaknesses, but I think at the same time, it doesn't necessarily to be. I must be perfect first before. Of course, that's the idea, but I think in the journey also, as we are journeying together with God, helping each other to be better, then that's when all the wounds be being brought up and to be addressed. Up. That's why I think it's also important what William say to run together towards God. Because if you don't run together towards God, I don't want to have such a lousy boyfriend or girlfriend that I'll just leave it. Mm-hmm. And it will inflict more pain, right? So yeah, I think that's just a uh, short clarification. Okay, so let's just take a short break and then we'll continue with the rest of the session. Thank you. 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 Thank you.